गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर अभिषेक कुमार सिंह ट्यूटर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी ए एन एम सी एच गया बिहार एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक द लास्ट क्लास एज यू रिमेंबर वॉज असेंडिंग पाथवे ऑफ द सेंसरी ट्रैक्स एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट आर अदर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक विच इज कॉल्ड द फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ द फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ पेन how you define pain pain is defined as an unpleasant sensation and emotional experience which is associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in term of such damage it has pronounced plasticity that is with ongoing pain neuronal properties are quickly changed that is hyper excitability and this explains hyper algesia hyperalgesia is increased sensation of pain then pain is a very very strong learning signal this was regarding definition of pain now coming to the types of pain pain can be classified under fast pain slow pain superficial pain deep pain somatic pain visceral pain peripheral pain central type of pain physiologic that is acute pain or pathological pain which is chronic pain which can be further be divided into two types neuropathic pain and inflammatory pain neuropathic pain results from nerve damage by the inflammatory pain example is as a condition of rheumatoid arthritis where you get the inflammatory pain the stimulus that elicit pain is called as nociceptive stimulus or noxious stimulus you will listen this term again and again when we we'll talk in the coming classes noxious stimulus or nociceptive stimulus the receptors of pain are called nociceptors which are actually the free nerve endings and there are three categories of these receptors a delta mechanical receptors which conduct fast pain poly multimodal c fibers which carry slow pain and other nociceptors like thermal nociceptors which includes a delta and c fibers now a delta for carries pain when the temperature is less than 5 degrees celsius while c fibers carry pain when the temperature is more than 45 degrees celsius then these receptors are stimulated then coming to the spinal cord termination of pain fibers in dorsal root the pain fibers occupy the most lateral part of the root in dorsal horn a delta terminates in lamina 1 and 5 and c fiber in lamina 2 which is also called as substantia gelatinosa in spinal cord ascending fibers occupy the lateral funiculus you are aware of all these terms lateral funiculus these lamina 1 and 5 substantia gelatinosa which is lamina 2 then c fibers form a very discrete tract called tract of leisure so this is about spinal cord termination of pain fibers then there are theories for pain there are specific theories for pain which explains like one of the theory is the specificity theory of pain which states that pain sensation has a specific modality specific receptor and a specific pathway in the cns central nervous system there are other theories as well like over stimulation theory pattern theory but the specificity specificity theory of pain explains all aspects of pain then we come to the dermatomal distribution of pain fibers from t1 to t4 nerve root mainly innervates thoracic organs then t6 to t8 which innervates upper abdominal organs and t10 to l2 for lower abdominal viscera localization sharp pain is better localized than dull pain because of specific dermatomal representation and also its somatotopic organization in central nervous system 
visceral pain is less localized than somatic pain because of less number of receptors in the visceral structures. Then we come to pain pathways. It is the lateral spinothalamic tract which we have talked in detail in the last class which carry the pain. It is divided into two types. This lateral spinothalamic tract or the pathway is divided in two types. One is the paleospinothalamic pathway which is the oldest pathway and second is the neospinothalamic pathway and we we'll talk about these pathways one by one. So this lateral spinothalamic pathway is divided into two types paleospinothalamic pathway and neospinothalamic pathway. Coming to the first, the oldest one that is the paleospinothalamic pathways. It mainly carries sensation of slow pain from deep somatic and visceral structures by C fibers. Through C fibers, they carry the sensation of slow pain from where deep somatic and visceral structures. And then the first order neuron enters spinal cord and terminates mainly in laminate 2, which is also called as substantia gelatinosa of dorsal horn. From there starts the second order neuron which decussate and ascends up in the contralateral spinothalamic pathway. The fibers are more medially placed. In brainstem on the way to thalamus, fibers project to three major nuclear groups forming the three subtypes. At the level of medulla, the contralateral from second order neuron heavily projects to the reticular formation, so called spinoreticulothalamic pathway. The name itself explains spinoreticulothalamic pathway. Fibers also project to midbrain nuclei like midbrain reticular formation, and fibers also project to hypothalamus forming spinohypothalamic fiber system. You can see in the diagram here we have how the fibers are projecting to the thalamus, neurons projecting to thalamus and the neurons projecting to the reticular formation of pons and the reticular formation of medulla. From there they are going to thalamus and from there to the association cortex and post central gyrus which is the somatic sensory cortex and here we have the second diagram which explains what we have just talked how it is projecting to the reticular formation of midbrain then first order neuron second order neuron then coming to the third order neuron the third order neuron in thalamus terminates mainly in the medial nucleus group from where the third order neuron arises and projects to different areas of cortex including the limbic cortical areas. This pathway mediates arousal, affective aspects and autonomic response to pain. Okay, then we come, this was all about the oldest pathway that is paleospinothalamic pathway then we come to the second type pathway which was the neospinothalamic pathway which mainly carries fast pain and fibers are A delta fibers slow pain fibers were C fibers and the fast pain fibers are A delta fibers the first order neuron in this neospinothalamic pathway terminates mainly in laminate 1 and 5 in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Here the neurotransmitter is glutamate and neuropeptide that is substance P. We have talked about neurotransmitter in previous classes. Then the second order neuron crosses opposite side in the same segment of the spinal cord and it ascends up in the lateral spinothalamic pathway. There is also a topographic organization of fibers. 
that is the fibers from the lower body parts are placed laterally and fibers from the upper part are located more medially in the lateral funiculars. Fibers from the sacral spinal segments occupy the most lateral part and from the cervical region present in the innermost part of the spinal thalamic tract. The second order neuron terminates in the lateral nuclear group which is BPL nuclei or the specific nuclei of the thalamus. So where the second order neuron terminates? It terminates in the BPL. This is a type of nuclei when we talk about thalamus in the next class. We will talk about all these nuclei present in thalamus. So you have just here you remember that second order neuron is terminating in the lateral nuclear group of thalamus that is BPL or specific nuclei of thalamus. From here the third order neuron originates from the specific thalamic nuclei and then they project to the post central gyrus which we have seen in the last diagram the sensory cortex which is better localized low pain or fast pain it is the fast pain which is better localized. You can see here both the pathways. The red color line which is ascending up is the one which carries the fast pain which is carried by the neospinothalamic trap. If you can see this, this is the neospinothalamic trap, the red color line and the green color line is the paleospinothalamic trap which carries the slow pain. The fast pain is carried by A delta fibers while the slow pain is carried by C fibers. How they are projecting to the various levels in medulla, midbrain and then going to the forebrain from there to the from there in thalamus and then projecting to the sensory cortex in the cerebral cortex. Then we come to some details about various types of pain we talked about like first deep pain what do you mean by deep pain deep pain is one which is originating from the nociceptors in the deeper somatic structures such as muscles tendons bones periosteum and internal ligaments it's dull aching and a poorly localized pain this is due to the deficiency of a delta fibers in the deeper structures pain from the deeper body parts are actually they are associated uh, they are, uh, occur by contraction of some skeletal muscle which may aggravate these pains. So deep pains are by dull aching and poorly localized because of the deficiency of A delta fibers which are less in deeper structures. Then second type of pain is visceral pain how it differs from that it is usually aching or a burning or an anginal in nature. Anginal means related to heart. So it's in, if intense it may be sharp or penetrating type. So these are the types. We will also talk, uh, study about pain when you will study surgery in your coming years of MBBS and you will again read about or know about in very details about different types of pain here it's just an introduction so if this visceral pain may radiate or may be referred to other structures radiate means the pain is going from one part of the body to the different to the another part of the body referred means pain happening somewhere and it is going and it is felt somewhere else that is referred pain it is again a poorly localized pain, stimulus being distension of organ if it's hollow and chemical irritation or ischemia also causes visceral pain. Then referred pain, pain which is perceived in the somatic structure due to visceral irritation or injury is called referred pain. Then how do we recognize pain recognition? Nociceptive stimuli is there, it causes damage to the tissue which causes release of proteolytic enzymes which are released from these tissues. These act on the tissue proteins and cells to release many substances that activates these nociceptors and when these receptors of pain are activated 
you have pain recognition, you feel pain. Now what are the different chemical substances that mediate pain? Like histamine, prostaglandins, serotonins, kinins and other polypeptides like leukotrienes and even substance P which is released from C fibers. Then recognition of a noxious stimulus is the function of thalamus. Appreciation of intensity, localization and discrimination is the function of sensory cortex. You can have an MCQ on this statement. Then what is allodynia? Allodynia is normal innoxious stimuli like touching the skin can elicit an intense and a long lasting pain. So even a normal innoxious stimuli causes a very severe pain that is allodynia. And what is phantom lip pain? Where pain is in the missing body part seen after amputation like in knee amputation or below knee amputation, arm amputation. Patient feels the pain in that part of the body which is no more there. So that is called as phantom pain. We talked about pain recognition and pain modulation. What is pain modulation? Local anesthesia and many centrally acting analgesics acts by increasing the pain threshold. They increase the pain threshold. Even distraction can cause decrease awareness to pain. Even strong emotions also decrease pain perception. However, the degree of emotional reaction varies in individual. So this is pain modulation like local anesthesia and centrally acting analgesics will actually increase the pain threshold. Even a strong emotional emotion can decrease pain perception. Even distraction can decrease awareness to pain. These are all pain modulation. The recognition, you have, we talked about this, that recognition of the noxious stimulus is a function of pain by appreciation of the intensity, localization, discrimination are the function of sensory cortex. Then endogenous pain control mechanism. What is endogenous pain control mechanism? Or endogenous analgesic system? Two, there are two systems which actually uh, tells us about this system. One is the neuronal analgesia and second is opioid system. This neuronal analgesia is also called as descending pain modulating system. It has two descending analgesic system which have been described. One is raphe spinal serotonergic pathway and second is serulospinal norepinephrogenic pathway. So there are two pathways which describe this neuronal analgesia. The first one originates from the frontal cortex and hypothalamus and they project to the cells in the periaqueductal region of the midbrain. You have seen the periaqueductal region? Show you once again. Here. This is the midbrain periaqueductal region. Here they project. This raphe spinal serotonergic pathway. In chronic pain, this pathway is activated by prolonged pain that chronically activates the ascending pain pathway. Fibers from these terminate on the periaqueductal gray and raphe nucleus in the medulla. So they are activated by the chronic pain. And the second one which is cellulospinal spinal nor epinephrogenic pathway, these fibers project to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord to inhibit the transmission of nociceptive impulses from the primary efferents. Then comes the opioid system that is endogenous opioid system which has an endogenous opioid receptor and that is, that is a morphine is a potent endogenous analgesic peptide which binds to opioid receptors causing 
decrease nociceptive synaptic excitability. This porphyrin is a potent agonist to the mu receptors. You can get this as an MCQ. That morphine is a potent agonistic to mu receptors. They act presynaptically as well as postsynaptically to inhibit the transmission of impulse from A delta as well as C fibers. Both they increase calcium conductance of postsynaptic membrane, producing postsynaptic inhibition and inhibition of release of substance P, which is a mediator of, which is a chemical substance to induce pain. So they inhibit the release of substance P from the terminals of the sensory neuron, causing presynaptic inhibition as well. This resulting in decrease relief of pain. So morphine is a very very potent opioid which is used in very severe pains in daily practice. Now how this can be reversed? The effect is reversed by naloxone which is an antagonist to these mu receptors where morphine is a potent agonistic to the mu receptors while naloxone which is an antagonist to these mu receptors which can be used in cases of morphine overdoses. So this was all about pain, physiology, the pathways and the pain control mechanism, the neuronal analgesic and the opioid system. In the next class, we will talk about sensory cortex and sensory abnormalities as well as spinal cord lesions. Thank you so much for today's class.